Hi there. Finally, I was able to get the Kobo stylus. It has been quite a challenge to get this little thing, but now that I have it, let's put it to work and see what all we can do with this and how is the note taking experience. Let's go ahead and unbox this. So let's see what all it comes with. So in the box, this is a packaging. And there you go. This is a stylus. It does not come with any replacement nib. So that is something you need to keep in mind because Kobo sells that nib separately. It comes in the pack of five. When I was ordering this, it was not available in stock. So maybe I will have to order this later. Uh, what else is there in the box? This is just the quick start guide as usual. And then a bit of warranty information. So the battery is hidden here. Very strange packaging because it is, um, you might miss it. So you might think that there's nothing and then you might just throw it. So you need to ensure that you have opened it. And then the battery is hidden over here. There is one more thing that you need to keep in mind, which is this. It is used to change the nib in case if the nib has gone bad. I don't know why Kobo could not find a better packaging to contain all this, but there you go. Here is your replacement nib. Although they do mention that in the notes that you need to flip it and then these things are available over here. But then I would say it should have been right here so that one can easily make out what is there in it and not uh, miss it. So anyway, that's all in the packaging department. So we just put it back. So the first thing that you need to do is open this and then put the battery. All right. Now the problem with this stylus is there is no place where you can store this stylus. So the only option is to buy power cover. Power cover is not out yet. So the only cover that is available is a sleep cover and in sleep cover you do not get an option to store this pencil. Which is a bit of letdown. Kobo should have provided a mechanism of storing it. I hope someone makes a cover for this Sage where you do have an option of storing this stylus. Now one thing I discovered accidentally is that it does attach magnetically to Sage but in a very odd position. So in this position it does attach. So if I put it here then you can see it is attached. But this is a very odd place to be in and you cannot leave it like this because you can easily drop it. So let's go ahead and create our first note. And we will also see how much battery drain happens while you're writing it. So let's check what's the current battery. If you see the current battery stands at 93%. And if you go to energy saving settings, I have actually set both these settings to never. Just so that it doesn't sleep while I'm recording this video. And then if you go to Bluetooth settings, then Bluetooth should be off. Yes, the Bluetooth is off and the Wi-Fi connection should be on. So Wi-Fi connection is on. So one, one change before we proceed, I can show you here. Earlier it used to show the battery status of the stylus along with the battery status of the e-reader. Right now I can only see the e-reader percentage and I'm not able to see the stylus battery status on this. So um, I don't know what will be the correct way of checking whether this stylus still has battery left or not. Or maybe we will have to find out the hard way when the stylus has already exhausted the battery, then we will have to change it. So it is a bit inconvenient in my opinion. I don't know why that option went away after I did the firmware upgrade, but that was a very convenient option to have it. So click on new and then you have two options basically you have you can create a basic notebook and advanced notebook let's go ahead with advanced notebook give it a random name and save it and now 
in the notebook you have these many options available so of course you can change the orientation if you want to write it in a landscape or portrait mode and then you have the options to select the pen type so either you can select ballpoint pen font and pen calligraphy pen or brush and then of course you can select the width and then the shade and this is the eraser option you can also erase with the second button on the stylus so let's write in the landscape mode and i want to see that uh, if i rest my palm on top of the screen then how will it behave because normally you wear something i don't know the exact name what people wear who usually draw on tablets so let's see if i'm going to rest my palm over here and then let's start writing and let's see okay This is to check the new stylus. One of the feature is once you have finished writing, you can double tap and then it should convert it to text. Right now I have written it in a very bad handwriting. So let's see if you, it will be able to detect my handwriting into proper word. So you just need to double tap. And of course, it was able to detect it properly. So it says this is to check the new stylus. So obviously, it was not able to detect that I wrote check because the handwriting was pretty bad. So if you want to change it once uh, it has converted into auto text, because this is something you would want to check if you, before you convert before you save it. Uh, it might be possible that what you have written and it has not understood in the right way. So you can always edit it. So double tap it. And again, then it will come into this mode. And in this mode, either you can use the eraser to erase it, or you can use this, this second button on the stylus and then erase the word. You will notice a slight ghosting which goes away within a few seconds. I don't know if it is visible on the camera, so it is gone already. And then we can check change it so let's write this is to check and once i'm done i'll double tap again and there you go and then double tap it again so that's it now the stylus also supports gesture options you can use gestures to erase text you can use it to join text create a space between the letters and you can also use it to create headings so let's see each one of those examples. So for example, I don't want this and I don't want to use the button of the stylus as well as the menu option, but I don't want this word. So I can just scribble it like this and it will go away. Let's see how I can join the two words together. So we write something And I want to join these two together. So all you need to do is swipe from the bottom towards upward in the gap. So that way it will bring these two words closer to each other. Similarly, if I want to create a space between the letters, then I can do like this and then it again, it create, it separates the two words apart. Now let us see how you can create headings and subheadings with gesture. So let me just go ahead and write something which I want to make it as a heading. So I will write introduction. This I want to be as a heading. So you just need to draw two parallel lines below that. Sometimes it stays, sometimes it goes away. So don't worry about that. And then I want to write description. And I want this to be subheading, so I will just draw a single line. So once I have done that, when you go here and click on convert all, then you will see that introduction appears as a heading and then description appears as subheading. You can also highlight a portion of your note by drawing a box on top of it. So for example, I have written this note and I want to highlight certain words or sentences, then I can do that. So for example, I want to highlight this first line. So then all I need to do 
is draw a box on top of it. Let's do it again. And then it is highlighted. Now when I convert it, then you can see that part of the sentence is now highlighted. With the advanced notebook, other than keep taking the notes, you can also use some of the advanced functions like you can insert drawing, which can be a signature. You can also insert diagram. For example, we can create a flow diagram. And once we are happy with our nodes, then we can convert everything by using the convert all feature. And then it will make a good attempt in converting everything. And then you can of course export it to your Dropbox or to your computer. So since I have already integrated my Dropbox account. I'm going to export it to my Dropbox. And then you get three options. So you can select either Word, Text or HTML. Let's select Word and export it. Now depending on how much notes you have taken, it might take a bit longer to export it and also depends on your Wi-Fi connection. You get exporting it to Dropbox. Now let's go to our Dropbox account and go to folder called apps. Under apps, you will see a folder called Rakuten Kobo. And under this, you will see another folder called exported notebooks. So this will contain all the notes that you have exported from your Kobo reader. So this is a file. Let's go ahead and open this file and you will see it has the same content, whatever we captured as notes in Kobo reader. Now the file is there in Dropbox and there is one more thing that you can do is to use an app like Notion and then import that notes in Notion. The advantage of doing this is if the notes is in Notion then you can read it in any device because they have apps for most of the platform. So just go ahead and select the file and click on open and then the notes will be imported into Notion. just like this. You can also use the stylus to highlight the sections in your ebook and you can also directly write on top of your book. So for example, if I have to highlight a sentence, then the first thing that you need to do is press this button and then select the text or the sentence that you want to highlight it and then release it. So it will be highlighted. If you want to write anything, you can directly write on top of it you can underline any text or any sentence. You can create a block and whatever you do, it will be stored under the annotation section, which you can access under the annotation tab. And if you want to export it, you can click on these three dots and you will see an option export annotations. Click on export annotations and it will ask you the file name. And this file will actually be stored on your e-reader itself. Unfortunately, here there is no option of exporting it directly to Dropbox. So now if I select export here, I don't get any option. So it is exported. However, it is exported as a text file, which is residing on this device itself. If I want to take that annotation and put it elsewhere, then I have to again connect my device to my computer and then copy the text file and then import it uh, to wherever I want to use that. However, in case of PDF files, you do get the option to export the annotations to your Dropbox account. So I have this PDF file here. If I open it, I can write things as usual, like ebook. I can underline things and then I can export this annotation to my Dropbox. So if I go back, you can see it is syncing to Dropbox. Then if you go to your Dropbox, and go to Rakuten Kobo folder, you will see the PDF file 
that you synced from your Kobo Reader. And if you open this PDF file, then you will be able to see all of your notes in there. The notes feature also works in case of manga book as well. So the manga book could be in a PDF format or it could be in EPUB format. If you do any notes on the EPUB format, and again, like the other EPUB format, you can only export the annotations on the device. You cannot export it to your Dropbox. But if the manga book is in PDF format, then whatever annotations you are doing, you can export it to Dropbox. As you can see here, I have these annotations, but when I export it, I get the local export option only. In order to be able to export your notes that you have taken on your books, you will have to make a change on the Kobo system file. So connect your Kobo device to your Mac OS or Windows machine. And once you are connected, browse to the Kobo e-reader uh, drive. And then there you will see a hidden folder called .kobo. Go inside that and then you will see another folder inside that called Kobo. Go inside that and then edit this file which says kobo ereader.conf. Open it with your text editor of your choice and then add it add this line just below the general you can actually put it anywhere you want it but just make sure that uh, you're not putting it in any existing block for example you cannot use this block and put it uh, underneath of this particular block so this is a safe place once you have done that you need to save the file and close it and then eject your Kobo device. So after making the change and ejecting your Kobo device, you will now see a new option in all of your eBooks. If you click on these three dots, then you will see an option called export annotations. Now with this, if you have made any annotations on any of the books, then you will be able to export it. Now for owners of Libra 2 who do not have integration of Dropbox available, in their device they can also make use of this particular utility which is called the kobonotes.com uh, this utility allows you to import the database which contains all of your notes so that you can read it online the only disadvantage with this is that you'll have to uh, do it every time manually and then the app is available only for android at this moment I could not see that any app is available for iPad or iOS. So to do that, you will have to register for an account, which is free. And once you are logged in, you will see this interface and you can then actually import the database from your Kobo device. So you'll have to click on upload dot SQLite and then you need to go to your Kobo e-reader. The files are hidden, so you will have to enable to show the hidden files and then go to dot kobo folder. Under this, you will see a file called kobo reader.sqlite. Select that, open it, and then it will import all of your notes, and then you can go and see what it has imported. So these are the annotations that I did on these two books. It is able to import that. That's all I had for you in this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to my channel to support my efforts. Thanks for your time and take care.